Hello everybody and welcome to class today. My name's Nate. I'll be teaching this class. Today we are talking about uh, things people lost that they probably shouldn't have. They were worth a lot of money and other lucky people who found them and probably got rich. So we can all hope that we could do that. Maybe we'll get some hints on getting rich quick. Uh, hey Jorge, how you doing today? Hi Nate. How are you? Fine. I'm great, thank you. Good to see you. Yeah. You, have, you having a good day today? Yeah, yeah. Uh, happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. Thanks. I appreciate that. I'm glad you're here in class. Thank you for coming. Thanks. Thank you. Welcome, Mohammed. How are you today? And you back. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks. There's Mohammed. Hello. Hello, Gabriel. Actually, I can't hear you. It's good to see you. I, I have some problem in the sound. I'm trying to fix it. Are you having some problems with your connection? Okay. Well, good luck. We'll uh, be starting in a little bit, so good luck. I hope we get that going for you. It's nice to see everybody joining us today. Uh, like you go for my classes, there's if you want to get the full document, um, some pictures and stuff. Pretty, pretty fun. Everybody joining here in 2013. It'll be a one hour class like normal. Uh, for those of you that haven't had my class before, my name's Nate. I'm from Nevada in the United States and love doing classes like this and look forward to hearing all of your opinions today. We'll have some pretty interesting uh, things to say, I think. Something that everybody has in common, so appreciate you joining. Um, hey, there's your picture, Godemon. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Good. Can you hear me? I can hear you great, thank you. You have okay, thank you. Is that a new microphone? Yes. I, yeah. Looks good. You look like a DJ or something. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, I'm I see. Not a DJ. You're not a DJ. Well, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm so. I see some of our friends uh, see that class is full. Just hang in there. There might be an opening a little bit later, but uh, we're gonna get started today. And uh, I think there are a couple people here I don't know, so we'll just do the normal. Introduce ourselves if you'll say where you're from, and um, I want you to answer one question when you introduce yourself. What is something you have lost in the past, but uh, you wish you didn't lose it? Uh, okay. So let's start with Sebastian. You're always great to start off class. Welcome, my friend. <laughs> Thank you, Nate. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. How are you today? I'm cool. I'm great. Good. Thank you. I I noticed. Uh, just I have to ask you first. I noticed you have a Notre Dame t-shirt on. Yes! Did you know they're playing for the national championship of American college football? No idea, but woo, go for it. Yeah, <laughs> on Monday they're going to play for the national championship. So I, I have didn't no know idea. that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's, let's let you start just uh, quick, your name, where you're from, and then tell us what's something you lost that made you feel really bad that you lost. Hi everyone, I'm Sebastian from Santiago, Chile, and <laughs> I lost my dignity. <laughs> oh. oh, wow, your dignity? Oh, we don't want to hear that. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah, right. No, 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 no. Something, oh, that's a hard question. I'm, I'm not pretty sure. Um, what could it be? What could it be? I'm trying to look, but everything is here. So your cat, know. maybe. Your cat. <laughs> oh yeah, I lost my one of my cats. Once. Okay. Okay, yeah, more time. Be, yeah. Okay. But my dignity is to. Well, if something else comes up, uh, comes to mind. You can share it later. No problem. Thank you for okay. being here, Thank Rodrigo. You. It's your turn. I'm I'm from Peru. I live in Lima. In Lima, uh, Peru. Wonderful. 
Yeah, uh, my name is Rodrigo. Have you ever uh, lost something, Rodrigo? Lost, um, lost, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I lost my cell phone one day uh, on the bus. Cell phones, yeah, that's bad to lose. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for joining class. Okay. Hello, Omar, how are you? Hi, I'm fine. Wonderful. Uh, the thing I lost uh, in the recent days is my iPod. Oh. I forgot it in the university and it was gone. I just put it in 10 minutes and then I just back and there was nothing. So uh, right now I have no iPod. I am sorry. <laughs> Hopefully you'll find it. And Omar, you're from uh, Turkey, is that right? Yeah. Okay. I had to check my memory. Thank you. Welcome to class. Uh, I'll go next. My name's Nate. I'm from Nevada in the United States. And I'll tell you a story. One time I lost, one time I went on a trip with my family and we went to the ocean. And so we could all travel together. We rented a big van. And as we were traveling, we were very excited when we finally got to the ocean. And I had the keys to the van and I put them in my pocket and we were on a beach that was very far from any town and we all went down on the beach we got in the water we had a good time and it was time to leave it was almost night and everybody said hey Nate where are the keys oh. <laughs> and I reached in my pocket and no keys <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, and and we had been there for a long time, so there was no way to find them. But that was bad. That was pretty bad. <laughs> uh, so that's what my are you story. doing? Well, uh, I'll t you know what was funny? My pocket had kind of folded, and so when I reached in, I couldn't feel them, but they were really in my pocket. And so, after about four or five times, somebody said, check again, we have to have these keys. And I put um. my hand in my pocket, and, and I just barely felt the edge, and I unfolded it, and it was in there. And everybody thought, <laughs> <laughs> everybody thought I was playing a joke. And they were like, Nate, hey, you're stupid, we're cold. Everybody kill you. <laughs> yeah, they, were, they wanted to kill me, yeah. But luckily, they were my family, so they didn't kill me. <laughs> Sometimes that even. <laughs> yeah. But it was pretty funny. It was pretty funny. Okay, well, uh, that, anyways, that's my story. Let's go on uh, with the introductions. Nagla, I don't think we've ever met. Did I say your name correctly? Hello. Hello, teacher. I am Nagla. Okay. Where are you I'm from, from Egypt. Of from Egypt. Egypt? Okay. Yeah. But I live in, in Kuwait. And you're living in Kuwait. Okay. Yeah. I am working teacher. Wonderful. Uh, have you ever lost something that you'd like to tell us about? Again? Have you ever lost something? Like... Um, like uh, this, is the first, this is the first time uh, I, I came to this class. Okay, no problem. No problem. Uh, okay, if you, you. No, you are just fine. Uh, we're happy that you're here. Um, if you want to listen a little bit, and then I would just encourage you as much as you can, try to participate because that's how you will learn the quickest. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mohammed, I think it's your turn. Yeah, uh, hi. Hi. Where are you from, Mohammed? And tell us about some time when you lost something. Yeah, okay. I'm Mohammed from Jordan. Jordan, uh, okay. Actually, I'm Yeah, Jordan. Exactly. Actually, I'm trying to find something I lost. Um, but. Uh, the biggest things or the biggest things I lost, uh, actually I lost my honey. 
so 2012 is very bad for me. I I hope to to find something valuable more than 2012 and 2013. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for thank you for sharing that, and we will definitely have more chance for you to talk about things like that in the, uh, during class. So thank you. We're glad you're here. Thank you for joining us. Max, how are you today? Yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, great. Uh, what about you? I'm great, thank you. Just tell uh, the class real quickly where you're from and something you lost sometime. Uh, yeah, all right. Uh, you can call me Max. I'm from Turkey. Um, on Saturday, I lost uh, my identity card uh, while I was uh, walking. Uh, on the sidewalk, I recognized uh, that uh, when I checked my pocket, <laughs> uh <-huh>. I <laughs> I find uh, I found that uh, I I lost my identity card and um, I uh, I didn't do uh, anything. Uh, I couldn't. Uh, I could nothing uh, because uh, um, I I search. Everywhere uh, that uh, where where can I find uh, every place? But um, I couldn't get it. Uh, and uh, that's frustrating. Uh, I had to, and I had to get new identity card. <laughs> okay, I've done that before. I lost my driver's license once, so that's not fun. I'm sorry that happened, Max. It's good to have you in class. <laughs> Jorge, I think you're up. Oh, okay. My name is Jorge. I'm from Venezuela. Uh, well, actually, I don't remember, but uh, once upon a time, I, I lose uh, uh, a backpack. Um, I remember I I have inside a watch. Uh, well, I remember that I watch. I I I, I lose that. Oh, that's frustrating. A whole backpack. Okay. Well, yeah. thank you for joining us from Venezuela. We appreciate you being here. Thank Godeman, um, let me see how my memory is. You're from Congo, but you're living in Denmark. Denmark, right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Sebastian, for helping me. <laughs> no, it wasn't, wasn't me. It wasn't you? <laughs> who who, who no, helped No, I, I was. Oh, th thank okay. you very much. Thank you, Jorge. Okay. okay. Now, now we know. Now we know each other where they we've come from. So. <laughs> yeah. So tell us, Godeman, what's something you lost one time? So I lost someone. <laughs> you lost I someone, lo a person? Yes. So oh. I lost. I lost. Uh, I lost a best friend in 2009 in a car accident. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Okay. I lost, yeah, but uh, so it's past. So. Okay. Well, thank you. We're happy you're in class. Thank you for joining, Godeman. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Okay. And Gabriel, you're the last one to talk to start us off. Oh, hello. Well, I'm Gabriel. I'm from Colombia. And I think I really regret the loss was once when I lost money. I have a oh. I have a hole in my pocket <laughs> and I didn't notice that and I put uh, a bill with that okay. it, a huge bill and I was a child. So it, for me it was a lot of money on that on that age. So oh. big, big that's mistake. frustrating. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, thank you, everybody, for getting us started. I think uh, the feeling of losing something is uh, something everybody has in common. Everybody has felt that before, and it's not a good feeling. You don't like no. that. Um, and I think most of what we talked about today were personal items, things that just belong to us for the most part. Wonder if you were in charge of something that was very important to a whole city or a whole country. How would you feel if you lost that? 
I, I think you kill myself. I think you would feel like you kill yourself or even to hang <laughs> <Yeah>. yourself. <laughs> yeah. to, to Me too, I'm agree. Yeah, it would be, you'd feel a lot of responsibility, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, today uh, for the topic I picked uh, valuable art now, that was lost and, and found later in weird places. So let's, uh, let's mention a little bit, why is art important to a, to a country or a, a culture? Because it's history, it's what... Yeah. It's very important because it uh, represents uh, the 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 things you have you have uh, uh, you have drawn you have uh, painted like uh, it can be maybe a person in a president or whatever. So it's uh, very important if if you if you lose if you lose the art, so it means you. You lose that things you 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 draw like that. For example, there's some arts it costs a lot of money, million. Yeah, some uh, some pieces of art are valued at millions of dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, um, art doesn't have to be just a painting. Sometimes it could be a sculpture or film. A status. Statues, yes. Yeah. Um, many things. Even an entire building, architecture, can yes, be considered is. art. Okay. Even a plan, even a, even a, even a, for example, uh, engineers, those who draw the house, how do you build, build uh, those who, I don't know how to call it. Oh, yeah, I know, I know what you're trying to say. The little trees? Yeah. No? Oh, but Both like side. A, the bat Japanese bonsai trees? I think it's that. For example, a map, for example, for map for country or... Oh, like a map? That. Yeah. Okay. And also, very important, if you, if you lose it, you lose uh, something very important for the country or for the other right. people. Like, like um, historical documents. Yeah, yeah. Things that, like that. Yeah. Letters. Yeah, I, think, yeah. I think so. Go ahead, Max. Uh, yeah, go on. Excuse me? Uh, you want me to go on? Oh, I, I'm the sorry. Power? I meant to say Jorge. Jorge was, yeah. had something to say. No, no. Uh, I think I think it's so important because it, the, 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 that, that it is so important. That's okay. the reason I think. Not okay. only the value, the the, the 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 value, the the. the are you understand me? Yes. Yeah. Not, not just not the, only the, the value of the or exactly not not only the money or or the price. Of the audit, I think is the the most important is part of the culture of the of the country. Okay, very good. Well, uh, I think all of us have probably heard stories in the past about items of history or items of art, things of culture in the past that have been discovered, and we would think that these things would be taken care of, but it's very easy for them to get lost over time. So right now I'd like us to open up uh, the document which I had attached to uh, the class. Um, I think it was called <laughs> Valuable Art. Let me see what the name of it is. Okay, ancient pieces of Eight art ancient art. pieces of art. Yeah, found accidentally. That's the one. And I'm going to open it up here too. There are many examples of this, but these are just eight uh, expensive artworks which people found on accident. Nobody knew they were lost, but in the end uh, somebody found them and they were worth a lot. Okay. So what I've done is I've listed where they were found, 
we can read about them, and then uh, we'll take a look at the picture. Okay, so let's start here on slide number two. Farm field. In a farmer's field, who'd like to read about what was found in a farmer's field? I can read. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you, Sebastian. In a farmer's field. In so, a Sebastian, let me uh, let me let me pause you just a second. Can we make sure that everybody's using headphones? I don't know if it's just me, but I'm hearing a real bad echo. No. Is it just yeah, me? Just me? No, I can hear it too. Okay. If we use uh, if we use headphones or at least mute the microphone when we're not speaking, it will help eliminate that echo. Okay. Sorry for the interruption, Sebastian. Go ahead. No, that's okay. Thank you. In 1920, a Greek person named Yorgos was digging in his field on the island of Milos when he underrated several carved block of stone. He burrowed deeper and found four statues, three figures of Hermes and one of Aphrodite. The god, the god, the goddess, I'm sorry, the good, can you help me, Nate? The, the goddess? goddess? Of, the goddess of love. Thank you. Three weeks later, the Colseal archaeological expedition arrived by ship, purchased the Aphrodite and took it to France. Louis 18 gave it gave it the name Venus de Milo and presented to the Louvre when it became one of the most famous work of art in history. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. <laughs> what do you think of that? Beautiful. Yeah. Pretty incredible, isn't it? Uh, yeah. This yeah. man is just Venus out in his field, field working and find some things so he digs and it turned out to be one of the most famous works of art in history yes i i say i say beautiful because i think uh, the the mythology greek greek mythology is incredible it is I, incredible I, I, it's incredible and it's known all around the world too right yeah so um Here's a look at the the statue. This is actually the statue that he found underground. In a farm field. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh and I think he said it didn't the article say there were other statues too, right? Yeah. Three. Actually. Four, I'm sorry. First yeah. And this one he sold. I I don't know how much he sold it for. But it's still in the Louvre, I think, so Fantastic. You know, here yeah. in the United States, I've seen a lot of people have uh, metal detectors, and they go around and try to find coins or metal, things that people lost. Have you ever seen somebody doing that? I can't remember. I can, can say again, please. Yeah, they have a, mach a machine, and they hold it, and it, it detects metal under the ground. And then they try to, it, it makes a sound when it goes over metal, it'll like go beep, 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 beep. Oh, yeah. oh okay, okay, okay. And then they search for, yeah, yeah, for search treasures. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and so they, they look for coins or jewelry, okay. stuff like that. Especially at the beach in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. People lost everything in the beach. Yeah, <laughs> in the sand, that's true. Just lost. Yeah. You, you you should know it, Nate. Yeah, they could find my keys, maybe, right? <laughs> <laughs> but there is a TV show dedicated of that. I I hear about that, and they go to the houses of. I have echo. Oh, sorry, it's not from me. Is is they go to the houses uh. of famous people, and they go for a metal detector, metal detector. Okay. And they have found cars or, and things like that. I think that's amazing. Oh, really? Yes. You know that makes me. That reminds me. Um, near where I live, about sixty miles from my house, is this is a town called Carson City, and 
just recently in the news there was a man and he was yeah. uh, he was very introverted he didn't like to visit people he didn't like you know visitors and so all his life he was just in this little house and he died and so when the authorities went in they found inside uh, the house he had stacks and stacks he collected gold coins and they were valued at millions of dollars but they didn't know who to give it to because he was he, he didn't have family and so they had to search and they found one cousin that lived a long ways away and she inherited all the gold coins it was crazy lucky bastard yeah, she probably didn't even know him, and then yeah, <laughs> like, like Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> crazy, huh? All right, well let's go to uh, let's go to the next the next piece of art that was found. See where it was found. Uh, for those of you that are following along, it's slide number four. Anybody brave want to try to read this one? Yeah, okay, I can read. Can I read, teacher? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Can I? I can read. Wow. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Let's Everybody start. Everyone <laughs> Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, Jorge, I I believe you were first. Am I right? Okay. <clears throat> okay, and then we'll we'll try to get everybody a turn today. I promise. Okay. Uh, we need a uh, street. I know. Uh, we need right. Beneath, 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 beneath. In February 21, 1988, electrical 78. workers, 78, sorry, That's electrical okay. workers were putting down lines on a street corner in Mexico City when they discovered a uh, 20 ton stones, past relief of the Aztec Knights Godness, Goyolzauki. Okay, it's a belief. It's a belief to have been sculpted in the early 15th century and buried prior to the destruction of the Aztec civilization by the, by the Spanish conquistor in uh, I don't remember, <laughs> the 15th The stone was moved two yards from the site to the Museum of the Great Temple. Very good. So under a street, this was found. Yeah. I've actually heard of a lot of things found in Mexico City uh, by, by crews um, who were digging, and they found things. And actually, um, Rodrigo, you're from Peru, right? Yes. I remember seeing a television show by National Geographic, and there were, um, they were digging up mummies. Oh, yes. There Do you know a, about this? Yes, but, but I don't know if, if you refer to a, a woman that was named uh, Juanita. Uh, uh, it was a movie that was found in, the, in a mountain. Yes, they were up on the mountains. Um, and there was, there was a town and they were digging right in this schoolyard and there were these ancient mummies and bundles of mummies that were there near the school yes yes and, and uh, she was a, a prince a prince that was she was in the, in the top of the mountain yes, oh. yes. the princess right yes okay Wonderful. That's what this reminded me of, things buried, you know, like that. Um, are, are there any words I should have asked? If there's ever a vocabulary you're not sure of in the reading, please ask me and I'll help you. There is an echo. Yeah, there is an echo, isn't there? I'm trying to figure yes. out who it is. What is a uh, uh, warrior prior uh, next to century? Century and word period to the church. Um, Worried in 15th century and word period. Buried? Buried. Yeah. yeah. Buried. Um, let's see. 
I'm going to write it on the chat. Buried means um, put under the ground intentionally. Like if you dig a hole, place something in it, and then cover it up, that means to bury. Enterrado. Okay. Okay. Enterrar. Enterrar okay. in Spanish. Yeah. I think that was a problem with a lot of pre Spanish art. Because when, when, when they discover America, they destroy a lot of, of art of native people because they believe it was against of their faith. And I think it's something bad because it was a legacy. Right. When they came to America, they destroyed all a lot of the sculptures and art from Lions and Aztecas because they believed it was a game of, of the Yeah, that's that's very sad, isn't it? Because there's no way to get that back. What the fuck does it mean? What about what? Best release. Can you write that down, please? Yeah, okay, on the fourth line. Some fast relief. Let me turn my thing back on. The fourth line. Some okay. fast relief. What do you mean? Oh. A bass relief. Uh, yeah. That's the form of sculpture. Uh -huh. It's a word that describes like that type of sculpture. Uh -huh. Okay. So this is a picture here of the carving in stone that was found. Yeah. And that's a very famous one also. Let's move on. Uh, to take a look at what was found in a hole in the ground. This time. Yeah. Let's let's go to uh, slide number six. Now there were so many great volunteers that wanted to read. Who's going to take the turn right now? I'll take it. Okay. Go ahead. In 1987, more than 500, 500 movies dating from 1903 to 1993 were dug out of the hole in the ground of Dalton City, just north. Under normal circumstances, the 33 millimeter nitrate films would have released at Prima Force. To preserve the purpose. Okay. Permafrost. 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 Uh, the city Yukon is in Alaska, uh -huh. and it's very, very cold there. And so permafrost means the ground is always frozen, always. Oh God. And so that cold temperature preserved these films. And Whoa, 1903? 1903. Yeah, the films were from the year 1903 to 1929. And then they, were they were dug out 50 years later. <laughs> what happened to you, God, man? <laughs> yeah, so, so somebody, <laughs> somebody probably thought... Oh, I'm gonna bury these. So nobody, you know, people bury things on purpose so they don't get stolen, and then they lost them or whatever. And have you ever heard of a place doing uh, um, time capsules? Oh yeah, my God. <laughs> I'm sorry, Nick, but I'm yes. Sorry, yes. What is a time Here. capsule? A time capsule. Well, here in Chile, we in the, the the last year, I think. No, not the last year because it was 2012. Yeah. Well, I don't remember. 2011. <laughs> oh. Yeah, to, yeah, I think it was. We were celebrating the 200 years of the independence of Chile. So, 
what the government do did was build a, a capsule time and they put a lot of things like books and films and cultural things from Chile and okay. they bury it like they know yeah they bury it in the center of, of Santiago the capital so I, I don't remember at what time at when they are going to open that but I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to be alive when that happens <laughs> <laughs> so. has anyone else heard of uh, an example of a time capsule yeah. Have you ever been around when one got opened up? Have you ever seen a, seen a time capsule opened? Time capsule? No. Sometimes they put them in buildings, um, like the cornerstone the very corner part of a building they'll have a, a stone that's hollow and they'll put things inside sealed up and then build a building around it okay I'm trying to remember I was there one time when somebody on the news opened one of these and it was like a metal cylinder Ah, oh, you did that. You did that. Uh, I didn't do it, but I saw it. Um, oh, okay. And it seemed like there were. It was from a school, and inside of it were letters that students wrote about 50 years earlier, and they had wrote what they thought the world would be like in the future and things like that. Okay. <laughs> If you made a time capsule, what would you put inside of it? Um, I don't know. I put photos. Photographs? Um, yeah, photograph. Um, maybe things. I know. I don't know. A watch or I don't know. I don't know. Any other ideas? What would you put inside of a time capsule? What is most uh, important? Would, uh, I'll put my dreams, and in 50 years, I'll see what I have become. Oh, wouldn't that be fun? You know, we're all young enough. We could do that. Hello? Yes? Disconnected or something? Hello? Yeah, maybe uh, you, know, you could take a pipe yeah, well, and I'll seal it up and write, you know, I will open this in the year... Let's say... 2063. Okay. 50 years from now. Now I remember I read someone, from once, an interesting article about that scientists once had, sent, had already sent a time capsule to the space. Uh, because they feel that there, there is life outside, outside the space. They will find it. And it was a, a piece of gold who which have a, a carpet of a man, a woman, and one of the planet, of the Earth planet. And he was sent home, away from this place. Oh yeah. Like a time uh -huh. Yeah, oh. I remember. Um, was that on the 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 space ship Voyager? Yeah, I think that's the name. Yeah, and it had the recording of classical music by Bach and all that other stuff you said too. That that was very interesting. Uh, Joy, uh, I I have a statement about this topic. Okay, go ahead. Uh, you know the I don't know. Uh, maybe you uh, watched the film. Uh, I don't know whether you watch, but. Um, uh, I think uh, you heard the name, the Back to the Future. Back uh, to the and, Future, uh, yeah. Uh, one, uh, one, uh, one, two, and the three series. Uh, yeah, 
um, I think that, that uh, these films, these films are uh, leading the uh, future, the how to invent uh, the space voyage, and the something like that. Yeah. Maybe you can live there uh, uh, in the moon, maybe uh, Mars. I don't know exactly, but uh, this is very important thing to. Uh, and to this, these resources, uh, uh, I mean, in in the space, very uh, valuable. Uh, and uh, uh, if we acknowledge the, all these signs, the, uh, we can uh, improve uh, more, bet, uh, more, and uh, we can get better uh, than we are. Okay. Very, very profound. Thank you. That's I like your opinion on that. Uh, it's a very serious thing to think about the future and how we relate to it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there, was a there was a fiction movie about that, about the time capsule. Some kid, uh, in 50 years before, some kids put uh, what they think it's going to be in 50 years. And one intelligence kid uh, put uh, numbers. That numbers turned out to be a code. This code help what is gonna be in the future. I th uh, and uh, the story began. I think the name of the movie was Knowing. I guess it was in 2011. Oh, yes, Knowing. That was kind of a scary show. No, it wasn't. Is well, it's kind of. Clear. Wait, I write it down. Oh, a thriller. Clear, clear. Yes. yes. Thriller. Yeah. Knowing. I had forgot about that movie. I'm going to write that down. I want to watch it again. That was a good show. That was really good. Okay. Um, let's go back to the slides if we can. Let's go to slide number 10. This one to me was uh, another one that's pretty incredible. Not the most incredible, but pretty incredible. Um, Jorge, before we start, I think your microphone is the one that's doing the echo. Can you check your connection for us? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, who would like to read... Uh, here where it says on a wall. Okay. Um, let's. I can. I can read. Okay. Go right ahead. Me. Yes. Uh, well, uh, on a wall, a middle-aged couple in a suburb of uh, Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Milwaukee, Wisconsin, asked uh, an art uh, prospector to appraise a painting in their home. While he was there, he examined another painting that he couple had thought was a, a reproduction of a work by Van Gogh. Uh, it turned out to be an 1886 original. On March 10, 1991, the painting still life with flowers sold uh, at auction for one and four uh, dollars. One point four million, million dollars. Million, yeah. million dollars. Yeah. No. <laughs> so they thought the picture they had was just a reproduction, but it was actually a Van Gogh original. Incredible. I I have a question, but I, um, I'm I'm not sure of this. If 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 for for example, of that that couple had that painting, they could sell it, or uh, yeah. or or it's just uh, it's, it's like uh, how can I say it? Is is part of the world? 
art, art world. Oh, I see what you're saying. Can they sell it as private property? Yes. Or does it belong to the world? Yeah. They sold it. Oh. So, <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, they sold it for $1.4 million. Not the all all or just a part? For the one for the one painting. Okay. One point four million dollars. And um I don't know how they got it. Um here in the United States they have stores, they're called antique shops. I'll I'll type that out. And People go there to buy old things, sometimes old furniture, old paintings, things like that. And sometimes people will sell things to an antique shop thinking it's not worth anything and, and you just find things that are valuable. It's kind of crazy. That's probably how that happened. Uh -huh. And I think I think those people probably had a lot of art because they had another painting that they were having the art prospector look at. So they got lucky, that's for sure. <laughs> a lot of luck. Yeah, a hundred one point four million dollars <laughs> lucky. <laughs> that's really good. That's really, really good. And there's one more kind of like that. Uh, Let's read on. I think it's the next one, so it'd probably be slide twelve. Well, let me let me show you a picture. If you look at slide eleven, that's a picture of the painting. So they had, this is the painting they had, and they thought, oh, this is just an old reproduction. Boom, and they got rich. So um, I'm gonna skip. Actually, let's go to number fourteen. It says at a flea market. Do you know what a flea market is? No. If anybody knows, would you like to describe it? A, f a flea market is when you go with your personal things, like all things, and you go to 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 sell them at a okay. great price. In, in Chile, we call it uh, Feria de las Pulgas. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah, the word flea means like flea. A, yeah. It's like and, a sell, sell that things in your garden, for example. May, I don't know. No, no. You no, it's not, a, not food. Yeah. Um, it's a market. market. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, people just bring whatever they want to sell. And okay. they all gather in a big place, and you can just buy and sell. Anything, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. It's usually taking a place on holidays, right? Uh, sometimes on holidays or on the weekend, so a lot of people can go. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, there were some people that went to a flea market in Pennsylvania, and let's read about what they found. Um, you know, uh, just go ahead and raise your hand if you'd like to to read, and I'll do. If you haven't read yet, have you read already? Um, let's see, we got Gab Gabriel. Do you want to take a turn? I saw you raise your hand the last time too, yes. so we'll let you take a turn. At the flea market, a Philadelphia, a Philadelphia financial analyst, analyst was posing at a flea market in Adams Town, Pennsylvania, when he was attracted by a wooden picture frame. He paid four dollars for it. But as his home, he removed the old torn painting in the frame and hold a folded document between the canvas and the wood pack. It turned out to be a 76 copy of the Declaration of Independence, one of 24 known to remain. On June, on June 13, 1991, was sold at auction for two. $4 million. Wow. <laughs> it was hidden. It was Actually. hidden. Yeah, so there was the frame, 
and then between the frame, you know, so like it has the back, and this was wood, and then there was a painting on the front of it, but in between was a copy of the Declaration of Independence. And lucky person. He, yeah, very lucky person. He had no lucky. idea. He just so liked lucky. the frame. And, uh, you know, the Declaration of Independence, for Americans, that's like the most important document. That's, you know, for, for Americans, that's a really big deal. I think now, if you were to sell a copy of the Declaration of Independence, it would easily be more money. Easily. I think the, the guy who, who found this was at least for me, one of the luckiest one because he was in a flea market and he buy for a only picture. For yes. And for four dollars, uh, for, for example, only four dollars. Yeah, the 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 old couple they were searching for a painting oh, that right. looks like a, a Van Gogh or maybe some other artist. But this guy just buy bought a. A paint. I mean, a picture of them, something. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Um, and wonder if he had just liked the picture, and so he left it on there, and the declaration stayed there forever. But he thought, no, I want a new picture in this frame. Pulled it off, and he's like, what? <laughs> Maybe he bought he bought it because he liked the 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 frame, not the yeah. Not the <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever, do you guys have places where you think would be, I think that's a good idea to hide things behind pictures. You know, I was thinking, yeah. if I wanted to hide money, i put it, you know, put it there like that. Or, I don't know what else you could hide, you know. But that's oh, a good a hiding place. Okay, I go ahead. Yeah, it. tell us. When I, yeah. when I was a kid, like, six or seven I and I was and my parents gave me money I don't know like for me it was a lot of money and there was a, like five <laughs> bills of I don't know what I don't remember but I think I have to hide this because it's too much money and I had all over the, the, my house like in in the when you put the cassettes in that time there was cassette no CDs right right <laughs> inside of there in the radio and in some plants and and then I just forgot what I was <laughs> I oh, had no. my money <laughs> so I have to look all over my house but it was so fun because it was like I don't know I fe I felt like um, Indiana Jones trying yeah. to found my, my money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but when you find it, it will be like a gift. Yes. That's it's like you receive it two times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Does anyone else have places they like to hide things? No. I hide you? I never. I what do was have, that, Omar? Uh, I do have. Uh, three years before, I used to hide my money between uh, between the books. Since no one read the books, I hide my money and anything that I like there, especially with the paper, money I paper, so you can hide it and no one will discover that. Right, or especially inside of a book. book. Um. The, uh, the women uh, have always secret place to hide, uh, to hide the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is true. That is true. <laughs> you know, um, I've also seen people who would take a book and they'd open a few pages and then inside cut out that's so it was my like point. <laughs> hollow. Yeah, that's how you did it? Yeah, that's interesting. I have a problem. I hide uh, everything. <laughs> Um, I uh, um, passed the time. I don't remember where I had that. Uh, this, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible when you hide something and then you know you hid it somewhere and you're like, where yeah. is that? Yeah, that's frustrating. That is frustrating. 
Well, yeah. don't sell but, your stuff at a flea market. Live <laughs> <laughs> to search everything. A lot of time, I, I heard, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that that happens to to you also. That is winter, and you put a jacket from the winter that you you were they were like in the closet, uh, maybe, and you just put your your hands in the bucket and oh my god, oh my god, money. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's true. That's so great. <laughs> yeah, that is and great. And the pants. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Your pants when, when you when you wash your 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 cloth and you found money in in your in, in, the, in the pants. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My wife has a rule. She says any money I find in pockets when I do the laundry <laughs> is mine. <laughs> <laughs> and she keeps it. She keeps it too. That's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she said that's. Good. Yeah. She said that's my tip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of fun. Um, yeah. Let's see if we can look at one more. Well, I'll show you uh, one more here before we go. Let me load up. Status. Uh, what's a good one? So here was here was the picture of the Declaration of Independence. Let's look at number sixteen. And Omar, I think it's your turn to read. Am I right? Okay. Thank you. Employees of the God's House Tower, Archaeological Museum in South Northern England, referred their fights against a. Seven twenty inch black rock in the basement. In two thousand, two Egypt Egypt geologists in interpreting the museum holdings identified the black crack as as a seventh century BC Egyptian statue. So, if we're playing King Karaka, uh, how we sit monarch? Is that English? Yes, mon monarch. Monarch. Monarch from the region that it's more than Sudan. Karen Wardley, the South Amtion City Council Carter of the Archaeological Collection, said it was a mystery. How the salt skull picture indent uh, up in the museum basement? It could be the devil. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? So yeah. it was there all along. Yeah. All along. And nobody, and nobody they, knows. they just leaned their bikes against it. Yeah. <laughs> they just thought, oh, it's an old <laughs> thing. No big deal. <laughs> and it turned out that it was a big deal. A 7th century Egyptian statue. And they were just using it as a bike rack. So I, I liked that one as our last one because, you know, if you keep your eyes open, sometimes you can maybe see things that nobody else sees. Yeah. Or recognize something that nobody else recognizes. Yeah. It's a real yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it reminded me, I wish I had a link or something. There was a, there's a TV show here that people watch. Um, i trying to remember the name. It's like cities, or underground cities or something like that. And mm -hmm. it shows old cities and people will go down in the sewers or in caves underneath the cities and they find the found in the foundations there are older cities and they find very ancient places oh, okay. yeah yeah i i saw i saw that that program yeah. in national geographic for example under the uh, yeah, paris happened, so. uh, under the i don't know new york yeah, yeah i saw that program 
Yeah, that's a very cool program. I think it's called yeah. Cities of the Underworld or something like that. And they go yeah. to like Rome and other places too. And they find very ancient places. It's very exciting. Yeah. So, um, well, I, it looks like we're in our last minute, so it's time for me to say goodbye to everyone. I appreciate your participation. You are such wonderful students, and you work so hard. I just want to encourage you to please follow me as a teacher because I would love to have each one of you in all my classes. Oh, thank you, Nate. Yeah, thanks, Nate. You guys are great. Thank you so much. Have a great day and be safe. Thank you. Yep. Good too. class, good class. Thank you very much. Thanks, Nate. We'll talk to you later. Yes. Take care. Interesting one. Oh, thank everyone. you, Sammy. Okay. Appreciate that. Okay. Thank you.